it's not strange at all to me. <laughs> it falls in the line with cassettes, <laughs> with uh, um, growing up in a house with, you know, your parents had one speaker in one room and one in the other, you know, if they're in getting a car and there's one speaker in the kick panel that's working, which again is why you listen to stuff on many different speakers. You, can, you don't have any, what's out of your hands? You don't have any control over it. So, so that aspect of listening to an iPod or to me, for me, it's listening to lots of different speakers, and my favorite speaker is the, uh, it's the little speaker that's built in the Studer, uh, in the Studer, two tracks. Um, if it sounds good on that, it's, I love that speaker. At one point, I was trying to get a couple of them, but I really wanted one. So, um, uh, yeah, I think that's intriguing, uh, I, I, and, and I think you had to take that into account, you know, stereo. I used to work with, uh, do a lot of work that wound up in England, so very often we would have to check mono compatibility because all the radio stations over there are mono and the stereo mix would get compromised pretty quickly. Um, but still and all, it had to sound good. And we've got tons of mono records out there that sound good. Mono mixing is really hard. But if you can get it to sound good, well, it, it sounds good no matter what. So for me, uh, you know, there's some, there some areas personally that as an engineer that I'm not a musician, audiophile, engineer, I like that, that aspect. So my personal things are listening and trying to get things to sound outside of the speakers. Um, and uh, and uh, just like little technical details that aren't really part of the project. So, um, so <laughs> those are my personal agendas. Uh, so the fact that people are listening properly, you take into account the most brilliant uh, take on that was uh, listening to Bob Claremont, who I think in general has a pretty pragmatic approach about the way he goes about his work, is that he began mixing surround in, uh, at the same time he's doing stereo, which was you know, unheard of. And uh, somebody asked him where he had his speakers. He goes, oh, well, they're, you know, they're kind of around the control room. You know, it's like they're wherever they are. I mean, there's kind of one over there and one over there. And, and it sounded pretty cool to me because, yes, there is a standard, but Bob is it's like, you know, well, people, you know, they put them wherever they want. So, so for him to get it to work on that level, I think is admirable. But again, I think it comes to ears. It's like everybody can't do that. So, um, so it's, it's unfortunate, but the reality is, is that we don't have control over how we can't take the, I remember albums would come out and they would say, this record is meant to be listened loud late at night. Okay, well. If you can have that, that's nice, but um, as we used to tell, as I used to tell my students, if you mix it loud, all the hype is in the room. So you want it to feel like it's loud. You got to, you know, that's a hard requisite to put on somebody. You got to make sure it works at, at every level, loud and soft. <laughs>